This is Nine News Riverina with Vanessa O'Hanlon. Good evening. A blind man has been the victim of a vicious and cowardly assault. The 62-year-old beaten and left lying in pouring rain. The attack happened at a bus stop on the central coast of New South Wales and only ended when a bystander intervened. The parliamentary week has finished as badly as it began for the government, left battered and bruised over the cut to penalty rates. Malcolm Turnbull has tried to soften the blow, suggesting the cuts could be phased in to minimise the impact on workers. The Australian share market has rallied strongly following a record high on the US markets. The All Lords today gained 1.1% after Wall Street pushed through the 21,000 mark. With his analysis, finance editor Ross Greenwood. Police are investigating after a 10-year-old girl was grabbed on the arm by a man in Turvey Park yesterday. Priscilla Mocker filed this report a short time ago. The little girl had just jumped off her school bus just after 4pm when she was approached here at the intersection of Urana Street and Trevor Street. She's told police the man grabbed her arm and asked if she wanted to lift home. She's luckily managed to break free and run away. She's described the man as Caucasian of medium height and build and aged between 30 and 40 years of age. He was last seen wearing a purple, white and black polo shirt with a distinctive logo and a lightning stripe on the front, a baseball cap and white joggers. Police are stressing it may not be sinister. As you can see, it is quite a busy intersection, but they do want to hear from the man. At this stage, it doesn't appear that there was any violence at all, but uh, we did have a stranger touching a 10-year-old girl uh, when it wasn't invited. Anyone who was in the area at the time or has more information should contact Crime Stoppers or Wagga Police. It's been a week since the general manager of Wagga City Council stood down from his role amidst an investigation into alleged misconduct. Council comment any further whilst Alan Eldridge takes special paid leave. Just a week ago, Alan Eldridge defended his actions following revelations he'd failed to declare a conflict of interest. Fortunately, I missed this bit and um, when I found out about it, I acted appropriately. Eight days on, it's not clear what's happening behind council doors. Nine News has tried to speak with councillors, but they're reluctant to give anything away. But I think a running commentary on every, um, everything that is said or not said without having the proper findings is probably not in the best interest of, of um, the confidence in the investigation, the investigators. Some say it's not good enough from a council that prides itself on transparency. It, it's really quite a repugnant attitude uh, towards the people, like the, the people, they want answers. The investigation is expected to continue for weeks, with the finding from an external investigator to be released at the end of the month. While this is all going on at, at the top, uh, the community is suffering and it's just not good enough. President of the Wagga Ratepayers Association, Wes Feng, will meet with the council's investigator tomorrow. Meanwhile, Alan Eldridge remains on paid special leave. Grace Fitzgibbon, Nine News. Detectives have raided an unfinished house in Estella, seizing thousands of dollars worth of building supplies believed to be stolen. Officers say the homeowner has been snatching them from nearby construction sites. Construction workers caught off guard as detectives arrive at this vacant Franklin Street home. The owner isn't here, but the suspected stolen property he's believed to be hoarding is. It's hard to put a monetary value on it um, and we believe that uh, not all uh, items have been reported to the police. Detectives are yet to make any arrests, instead leaving with tools and supplies from the site. Among the loot, power equipment and cords. It's likely they've come from unfinished properties just streets away. We're a close-knit community, everyone seems to look out for each other and things like that, so um, it's disappointing and surprising. Thieves have been ransacking construction sites in Estella and Baruma for months, even stealing tapestry and bricks. It's left locals fuming, but police are confident today's find could curb the crime. Whether it's the blokes out on the construction sites that are having their tools and things taken, from the people that are trying to build their dream homes that are, that are having parts of it taken away. It's prompted a warning from police urging locals and builders to take extra caution. We appreciate that not everything can be locked up uh, overnight uh, during the construction phase, but certainly security of power tools. If you've had anything stolen from a construction site, contact Wagga Police. Priscilla Mocker, Nine News. 
pilots from across Australia will converge in Wagga this weekend for the 17th Halley heatwave. Local pilots were treated to a master call today with an international helicopter star. These boys insist they are not just playing with toys. Kyle Dahl is so serious about it, he's flown from the United States to showcase his talent and teach local heli pilots at Wagga Aero Club. And I've gone all over the world and this is one of the best I've, I've seen, so I'm really excited to be here. The former world heli master today hosting a training session before the heat wave hits town tomorrow. But it's actually good to have someone here teaching and showing us. Increases that wow factor a little bit too when you do actually get in front of your mates. With his eyes focused, seven-year-old Reese Wad proudly showcases his skill as an avid flyer. It's a good feeling and I just like having new friends. And it's not just fun and games, with officials warning of the dangers of the hobby. These tiny choppers are worth thousands of dollars and can hit speeds of 200 kilometres an hour. Wagga Aero Club will host 70 pilots here over the next two days. They will be coming from across Australia to see Kyle do his tricks. The heli heatwave will showcase remote controlled helicopter drone racing and night flying. Mimi Becker, Nine News. For the third year in a row, a student from Wagga's Charles Sturt University has been named a finalist in a world photography competition. Taylor Martin has gained international recognition for a photo of her mother taken moments after being told her cancer was in remission. The 21-year-old is one of 10 finalists from across the world. I think it's a photo that can relate to a lot of people. Um, it's certainly quite emotional for me and my family and, yeah, I really love the photo. <laughs> Taylor will head to the awards ceremony in London next month. Stay with us, still ahead on Nine News Riverina. Who was behind the wheel of an army truck that rolled, killing a mate at Holsworthy in 2012? The verdict from Alexander Gall's day in court. A Western Sydney man's incredible escape, shots fired at his head as he sat in his car. Hundreds of twisters tear across the American Midwest. And the reigning premiers take on the Broncos as the NRL season kicks off. A suspicious fire in an abandoned Melbourne factory has claimed the lives of three homeless people who'd been squatting inside the building. Neighbours heard a loud explosion as the Footscray factory erupted in flames last night. I heard some screaming, but I was not sure who is screaming. Then I saw the fire and I saw that front person was throwing water from, from the bucket on that, but the fire was so large, it couldn't control it. A can of petrol was found at the scene and police are investigating if the fire was deliberately lit. Four years ago, Alexander Gaul was behind the wheel of an army truck that crashed and rolled, killing a young soldier at Sydney's Holsworthy Barracks. Today, he burst into tears as he was found not guilty of any charges over the accident. A wild police chase has come to a dramatic end in Louisiana. The stolen ute careering onto a grass verge before hurtling through the air. It landed on top of a parked car roof. Meanwhile, SWAT teams swarmed a, sus a, sus a suspected sorry, carjacker in LA after police were led on a dangerous pursuit through the city. Britain's Brexit plans have suffered a major setback. Parliament's upper house demanding an amendment to the bill, which would trigger the breakaway. The House makes sure the rights of Europeans living in Britain are protected. A man has been remarkably su survived being shot in the head outside his home in southwestern Sydney. The father was sitting in his car when a gunman opened fire before fleeing the scene. Ahead in the news, spectacular images as deadly twisters tear across America's Midwest. The latest bizarre twist in Kelly Landry's legal battle with her, her estranged husband, Anthony Bell. The Sydney to Hobart winner asked if he dressed as a woman in disguise outside their family home. And you won't know his name, but he's had a front row seat to some of the biggest moments in Australian politics. He's never before seen photos coming up and sacked the smiling accountants behind the biggest blunder in Oscars history.
Now to breaking news. And a man believed to be in his 60s has died and a woman has been rushed to hospital after they got into trouble in the water at Bondi Beach. Emergency services were called to the beach late this afternoon. The woman is in a critical condition. It's the high-profile divorce getting messier by the day. Sydney to Hobart winner Anthony Bell forced to deny suggestions he's stalking his estranged wife, TV personality Kelly Landry. A court today was shown vision of a woman outside the property. Mr Bell asked if it was him in disguise. The AFP has been asked to investigate whether the personal details of a single mother were illegally released by the Office of the Human Services Minister Alan Tudge. Blogger Andy Fox has to repay thousands of dollars to Centrelink as part of the government's crackdown on overpayments. Labor wants federal police to investigate Mr Tudge's handling of her case. He says he's acted legally. A major truck blitz has been carried out aimed at taking dangerous vehicles off our roads. Trucks and heavy vehicles were intercepted in two areas around Sydney. Very disappointing today. We've already discovered three trucks that have been tampered with to allow the truck to exceed the speed limit. In the two-day operation, 33 trucks and trailers were found to have defects. 22 infringement notices were issued. Dozens of deadly tornadoes have devastated America's Midwest. Hundreds of homes have been damaged by the storms, which have claimed at least three lives. Coming up in Nine News, the Barangaroo tragedy, the victim, a young father with a pregnant wife. Tens of millions of dollars, Barack Obama's book deal, what his story is worth. The suffering families battening down for another round of severe weather. What's behind this? A man's daring nudie run through Sydney Airport. And they look like a bunch of rocks, but are these the er earliest living organisms on Earth? There's been a tragic aftermath following an accident on Sydney's North Shore where a car rolled onto a busy footpath. The 31-year-old woman hit by the vehicle has died. Heather Croxon was walking to work in Chatswood last Friday when the out-of-control car mounted the kerb. A car has crashed into a house in Sydney's south. It smashed through a hedge and then a balcony before dropping down an embankment and ending up against a retaining wall. It's believed the driver suffered, suffered a medical attack. He wasn't badly hurt. A Hunter Valley construction worker who died at Barangaroo yesterday has been identified as a father of one who leaves behind a 14-month-old boy and a pregnant wife. It's still unclear how Tim McPherson was killed while many of his mates are too traumatised to return to work. Barack and Michelle Obama have signed a book deal worth a staggering $78 million. Publisher Penguin Random House has acquired the rights to a memoir by the former US president recounting his eight years in the Oval Office. Former First Lady Michelle Obama will also pen a book for young people that she says will draw upon her life story. A French artist has re-emerged after spending a week living enclosed in a rock. Stunned and dazed, Abraham Poin Chevelle had to be helped from the 12-tonne stone, uh, the 12 ton stone after the extreme performance. The 44-year-old survived on stewed fruit and purees while in a body-shaped slot in the rock. He says he experienced strong hallucinations and vertigo. It was an odd sight around Sydney Airport today. A naked man captured on camera by passing drivers running on the road towards the departure terminals. He was then spotted darting through Qantas security before being tackled by staff near the boarding gates. Five guards were needed to restrain the man before AFP officers arrived and took over. Areas along the east coast of New South Wales have been battered by severe storms recently and now those affected are battening down for another expected deluge. Sadly, many are still cleaning up, some without roofs, following last month's extreme weather. Mike Larrigan is up next with Sport and Mike tonight. Tonight, the footy is back. It sure is. Not long to go. We're live from Shark Park in just a moment. Also ahead, Des Hasler talks about his future at the Bulldogs for the first time since he was almost sacked and what the Australians think of those doctored pitches in India.
The footy is back 151 days after winning the NRL Premiership. Cronulla begins its first ever title defence with the battle against the Brisbane Broncos. It's a fantastic match to open the new season. Lots of anticipation in the Shire and to set the scene, Neil Breen joins us live at Shark Park. Oh, Mike, good evening to you. And there is high excitement here in the Shire because... Looks good. Now, moving on, Des Hasler is close to a two-year deal with Canterbury and he's forgiven club legend Steve Mortar, Mortimer. That's the news out of today's Bulldogs press conference, but he also did a Donald Trump impersonation and answered lots of questions, many of which Des asked himself. Controversial Eel star Semi Radradra says he hopes to one day return to the NRL despite signing with French rugby for next season. The Fijian is still no guarantee to play for Toulon with domestic violence charges hanging over his head. They went from easy beats to premiership contenders in the space of a season, but GWS have scoffed at anybody who has them as favourites for this year's AFL title. It's laughable because we've only won one final and uh, people are, you know, the outs external media or people are, have that expectation on us. But internally, we, we don't focus on that. Steve Johnson will play his first game of the year for the Giants in tomorrow's pre-season clash against the Swans. The Australian cricket team is playing without fear and say they're not worried about Indian groundsmen doctoring the Bangalore pitch for Saturday's second test. The locals are desperate to give their side an edge after the Aussies' shock win in the series opener. I think on your feet out there, same thing is going to happen here. You know, If there's seam and bounce, if there's turn from day one, we're just going to have to adapt again from, from ball one. India is facing a fine for the poor condition of the pitch in the first test in Pune. To surfing now and the locals have again showed how it's done at the Australian Open. Ryan Callanan getting the most out of the small swell at Manly. His aerial 360 earning him wave of the day with a 9.6. Round three of the men's competition will begin tomorrow. Elite cyclists from across New South Wales and Victoria are gearing up to ride in our region's richest road race. More than 140 riders will battle it out for a $15,000 prize pool at the Tolland Open. This is Robert Gray's second bike ride for the day and despite the searing sunset heat, he considers it easier than his morning training. Gray and other Wagga cyclists are gearing up for this weekend's Tolland Open where 140 riders will pedal five laps of a 17-kilometre circuit. He's treading the line between coy and quietly confident. I feel like I could be in a good position, but you only know with, you know, 20 k's to go. He covers upwards of 250 kilometres a week at the moment, and while he's hopeful he'll shave time off at this weekend's race at Ladysmith, he plans to ramp up his efforts even more for the Blaney to Bathurst ride next month. You've got to know your body. Um, for me, I'm, I'm racing this weekend, but I have goals further on into the end of the month. Other cyclists are hoping the handicap start on Sunday will give them an edge. I've been going fairly hard, doing five or six hundred k's a week. Um, but, you know, if I'm anywhere near the finish, I'll just be happy. The race starts at 1.30 on Saturday afternoon. Priscilla Mocker, Nine News. Harness racing attention in New South Wales centres on Wagga this weekend. It's the Wagga Pacers Cup and the $85,000 on offer has attracted runners from all over the state. It's the big dollars that are attracting quality competitors this weekend. It's probably the strongest cup we've had for many years. Um, I think that mainly reflected on the increase in prize money to $30,000 and also for the first time it's Group 3 status. So. The Wagga Pacers Cup has doubled in prize money this year, bringing with it a prized pool of entrants. The Canberra, Orange and Albury Cup winners ready to trot around the track. Plenty of local horses and drivers will feature in the Derby and Oaks races. Local driver Bruce Harpley will take the reins of Miss Gold Fortune, a New Zealand horse with an owner from Albury. It's always good when they're here. Uh, I know strong horses coming for the big money and that, but uh, you got the best of the locals here as well. So, yeah, no, there'll be plenty of comp competition for sure. Harpley says large investment in local harness racing meets is vital to keep the sport strong. Uh, and this game's pretty hard, so you need this good prize money, and especially in your local area, to keep you backing up with owners and, and keeping us all keen to keep going. So, yeah, this is real important, these meetings. The club's meeting this weekend will mark a milestone as they move to a new venue within the next year.
It's a bit of history going to end here. We've probably the last cup to be run at the showgrounds, so it's going to be a big night and uh, we're looking forward to a lot of people coming. Mimi Becker, Nine News. A big day for sports fans in West Wyalong on Saturday with the opening of the region's revamped stadium. It cost $2.2 million and took almost a year to complete. Official celebrations kick off at 10 o'clock. Now coming up after the break, Gavin Morris with the weather. Scientists have discovered what they believe to be the oldest fossils on Earth. They were found in rocks up to 4.28 billion years ago in Canada. This is exciting. <laughs> the oldest fossils on the planet. It relates us to our origin. I mean, it's, it, this is, this is a, one of the reasons for intelligent life to evolve. Until now, the oldest known evidence of life had been found in Western Australia's Pilbara region. And still a matter of science, a small patch of mould has sold for $19,000 at auction. It dates back to the 1930s and was instrumental in the discovery of penicillin. Sir Alexander Fleming accidentally made the discovery while researching blood poisoning. He's the Scottish-born Australian who has been there for some of our most important political moments, but few people know his name. Now an exhibition of David Foote's finest work is celebrating years of significant snaps. To finance now, and as we saw earlier, the market was almost 70 points higher. Our dollar is buying 76 and a half US cents. Time for the weather with Gavin Morris. Good evening, Gav. Thank you, Vanessa. Nice to see some rain starting to spill over the southern ranges, not really reaching the plains today. We're into the low 30s, but we've seen the humidity levels begin to increase. That is good news. Temperatures up around 30, mostly throughout the higher elevated areas, and you can see on the radar some of those showers and isolated storms moving in. Most of the rain has been falling along the coast over the past 24 hours with the little isolated pockets only reaching the western slopes. Decent falls occurring in the west underneath this cloud cover, but this is what we're interested in. It has been very humid on the eastern side of the divide. Some of that moisture content spilling in over the flatlands and the plains and we saw that reflected in the cumulus cloud formation overhead. This was a lovely increase in cloud and moisture producing good rain over the Alpine districts, the Monero, up the ACT and reaching the western slopes uh, throughout today. Now the trough line remaining in place on the surface, the upper level coal pool coming into play and it is likely we'll see an east coast low form. Big flooding rain on the way for the southern New South Wales coast in towards the southern ranges. Some of it, not much, is going to spill in over the tablelands. Not much of it, it will reach the plains, but there's a little something there. This trough line extending all the way north into Queensland, pretty much running right along the Great Divide at this point. So therefore storms now in the forecast for the Cam Canberra, the capital, uh, Sydney, uh, Brisbane, 30, very humid indeed. Hot in the centre for Adelaide and in the west and storms returning to Darwin with light light rain and drizzle on the way for Melbourne. So taking a look at the forecast rain for tomorrow, it's going to be interesting showers now spilling in over the southern ranges and we may see some just little pockets there, uh, those clouds filling up with enough moisture to produce some isolated showers in across part the southern plains and around the Riverina. Still hard to come by that moisture inland, but those southeasterly certainly helping with it. There's that formation, that east coast low. That's going to be the hot spot as far as potential flooding rain is concerned. So at least we've got some shower icons here, but the further east you are, the greater chance that you'll get a little bit of activity. Uh, the shower act activity right throughout the Western Plains here is going to be really hard to come by indeed. Temperatures still fairly warm and it is going to be a little more humid. Temperatures into the low 30s right across the Western Plains. We could have some isolated storm development, particularly over the tablelands. The central tablelands will get quite active in the coming days. Beautiful Forbes there, 32 with the risk of a shower and you should see some of those towering queues off in the distance as well. Taking a look at the uh, sunrise at about 10 to 7 down at 7.43 and we've got a slither of moon on our hands at the moment with that new moon. So the long range forecast around the southwest slopes and towards the plains. Sadly, not as much shower activity. Isolated showers producing a millimetre or two at best, I'm afraid. And then drying back out. It is cooler though as we move into the early days of autumn. Uh, cool also, greater chance of seeing some showers and storms there right across the tablelands and the central west plains. Also, only isolated showers expected. That's Nine News. I'm Vanessa Ryan. Good night.